Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain the first logic game of LSAT Prep Test 71, which is the December 2013 LSAT. Now, this is the game with a movie studio scheduling six films to be released, and the rules are all before-after relationships. So we're dealing with an ordering game, specifically a relative ordering game, you know, also known as relative sequencing, because we're relating the variables to each other rather than to specific spots. Now, this game was actually a pretty easy game as far as logic games go. This is the sort of game where if you become good at relative ordering, you can get this done in under five minutes, potentially. So I've laid out the variables F, G, H, J, K, and L. I've also laid out the rules and combined them, and I'll explain how I did that. We start off with the first rule that F is before both J and L. So I have F to the left of both J and L. We have that K is earlier than J, and J is before H. So J is tying together those first two rules. Then we have the final rule that L is before G, and L is linking together the first and third rules, giving us our little web of relationships here. So very simple setup for this game, nothing tricky, no before, after, but not both type rules that you see in the exams in the early 50s. So let's go on to the questions, starting with question number one. Now question number one is a, just a general cannot be true question. We run through the choices, you know, asking ourselves, you know, which of these four could be true, we'll eliminate them, and then whatever remains will be our answer. So could F be second? Yeah, sure, if K were first, F could be second, so A is gone. Looking at B, G is third, could that happen? Well, yeah, we could have F on one, L on two, G on three, then have K, J, H coming after that, so B is gone as well. Looking at C, H on 4, could that happen? Yeah, no reason it couldn't. We could have you know, F and K on 1 and 2, J on 3, H on 4, then have L and G come after. So C is a possibility as well, so that's gone. Looking at D, K on 4, could that happen? Yeah, we could have F on 1, L on 2, G on 3, then have K on 4. Works per perfectly fine, so D is gone as well, leaving E by elimination. And if we look at E, K on 5, well, there's no way that could happen because we've always got to have at least two things after K, J and H. And so because of that, K could never go as late as 5. So for that reason, E is our answer to number 1. Next, number 2. Must F go before H? Looking at the main diagram here, we see that yes, we have F before J before H due to the combination of the first two rules, we know that F will always go before H, so A is our answer and we're good. No need to go through the rest. I'll take a quick run through of them though. J before G, no, they're not related. K before G, they're not related either, so C is gone too. L before H, they're not related, and then L before J, they're also not related. None of these other pairings relate to each other, so we can eliminate all four of them, leaving A. Next, number three. If G were before H, then each could be true except. So I've modified the diagram a little bit here. I would recommend that you draw a new one on the page just to show what happens when G is before H. So you see I extended H to the right a little bit and then put a branch between G and H. They're asking us, you know, essentially what cannot be true. So we'll run through the choices, seeing which four could be true. Could G be fourth? Well, yeah, we could still have, you know, K1, F2, L3, G4. That works fine. So A is gone. Looking at B, J on J on 3. Yeah, we could have K and F on 1 and 2, then have J on 3. That doesn't change. That's fine. K on 2. Yeah, that's not affected either, so C is gone. L on 3. Yeah, we could have K, F, L on 1, 2, 3. So that's gone, leaving E by elimination, L on 5. And that cannot happen because we have L before G before H, at least two things occurring after L, so L could never be as late as 5. So E is our answer for 3. 
Next, number four, if L is before K, what could be true? So I've drawn a new diagram here to represent what happens there. You start off by putting L before K, and then you know that K is before J before H. So it forms a long chain of L, K, J, H. We know that F is before L, so we stick that on to the front of this chain, and then we have G coming after L and not really relating to anything else. So almost all the variable placements are determined. All we don't know is how G fits in among K, J, and H. So they're asking us what could be true, run through the choices. L on three, no, L's definitely gonna be two, so A's gone. L on four, well, no, again, L's definitely gonna be two, so that's gone as well. H earlier than L, no, H is clearly after L because once you put L before K, you're putting L before H as well, so C is gone. Looking at D, J before G, well, we really don't know how J and G relate. They're not really determined. G could be before or after J. We don't know. So D is a possibility, and that's our answer. Taking a quick look at E, J before L. No, L is definitely before J here. We see that clearly, so E is gone, leaving D for number four. Finally, for number five, we have a rule substitution question. They're asking us which one of the following would have a similar will really have the same effect in determining the variables. So you basically want the answer choice that will give you the main diagram once again, but through the means of doing something different than what the first rule does. So for this, I would suggest running through the choices, seeing what is no more limiting and no less limiting than the original rule. Now I've laid out here the other rules, you know, K before J before H, which was the second rule, and then L before G, which was the third rule, then I have F, which isn't really related to them right now. So let's run through the choices, starting with A. Only K could go earlier than F. That basically tells us that F is going to be either first or second, which is something that we already know based on the original rule. And it tells us that F is not going to be later than any of L, G, J, or H, meaning F will go before them. So how would you indicate that? Well, you would do it by putting F over here and then putting a branch from F down to L and then from F to J while K is still ambiguous as to its relationship to F. So A does exactly what we want. It's our answer for number five. I'll take a quick look at the other ones though with you. K before L doesn't work because that's not something we know from the original rules. That's more limiting, so that's out. Next, looking at C, F must be released either first or second. That might look pretty good initially, but the problem is that that doesn't relate F to J and L, so it would still allow for the possibility that L would go before F for all we know at that point. And that's not permitted based on the original rules, so that's too open-ended eliminating C. Looking at D, F before both K and L. We don't know that based on the initial rules. Remember that F and K do not relate to each other directly in the original scenario. So that tells us something that we don't know. It's too limiting based on the original rules. And then finally E, either F or K must be released first. That is something we do know initially, but that doesn't tell us that F is before J and L. So E's gone as well, leaving A for number five, and that's the game.